Ты мазала. Вот. Hey, what's going on? My name is Sammy Ajaz. I'm the anchor of House of Politics. House of Politics is a talk show that brings on MPPs, ministers, mayors, uh, and I interviews them on why they got into politics, what they're going to be doing in the future, and what they are doing today. Today joining me is MPP Mitzi Hunter from Scarborough Guildwood. Mitzi, how are you? I'm really great. It's great to be here finally. Absolutely. <laughs> Mitzi, you know what? I want to take you right back to uh, your, uh, uh, where you were born, where did you grow up, where did you go to school. Tell me all about you. Well, I was born in Jamaica, and my family and I immigrated to Canada. Okay. We eventually settled in Scarborough, where I have the honor of serving. You know, I went to high school there. I went to Winston Churchill. So what high school did you go to? Winston Churchill, the Churchill Bulldogs. And, uh, and then, of course, I went to the University of Toronto Scarborough campus, which was one bus ride up the road, which is why I ended up going there. Nice. And, um, and it was amazing. Um, you know, I had an opportunity to to really you know build on that you no, know having great. immigrated here accessing education all the way through made all the difference for that's me amazing. and for my brothers so, so so tell me what made the transition 2013 comes and you say you know what i'm going to dive into provincial politics where does that thought come from and how difficult was the decision it was very easy in fact you know going back to high school when i was leaving high school for university and i'm saying this for the young people that are watching this show sammy you know i actually set out my life's goals and yeah. on, it was on one sheet of paper and on there i had run for public office yeah. i wasn't a, involved in a political party but what i was involved in was the community i was an advocate i i worked on initiatives all the way through and when i was asked to run for the liberals in 2013 during a by-election it was easy for me to say yes because i knew that i wanted to make a difference in my community being involved in politics yeah. being at the table gives you that chance you can do things on a bigger scale absolutely and you know what they say right it's so easy to be a spectator on the outside it's so easy to watch a soccer game and say hey beckham should have bent it differently you know what I mean? Or, 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 or Ronaldo should have taken this shot or, you know, LeBron should have taken this three pointer. But once you're on the inside, once you have a vote at that table is when you can make that real difference. Right. So no, that's great. In the writing of Scarborough Guildwood, one of the biggest issues rather concerns is gun violence. Uh, this year so far, gun violence is already up 33 percent in Scarborough nationwide as a whole. We've seen the criminal use of firearms increase by 81 percent from 2009 to 2019. On December 1st, 2021, you tabled Bill 60, the Safe and Healthy Communities Act, which addressed gun violence. It would declare gun violence a public health issue. It allows for counseling services and survivors of gun violence to be covered by OHIP and for all boards of health to develop programs and services that aim to reduce gun violence and assist those affected, including community and hospital-based violence intervention programs. So let me start off by this. What was the idea behind this bill? You know, Sammy, as I listen to you describe my bill, I think to myself, why isn't this already available? You know, someone who has experienced the trauma of gun violence, maybe they were in proximity uh, to an area where, where gun gunshots went out. Yeah. Why can't they get the counseling services and the support to overcome that trauma? You know, these are, are supports that the community really needs. And for me, you know, seeing gun violence happen in my local community it's affecting young people, younger and younger, in fact. We have to do something to break that cycle of violence. We have to make our community safer. It is in everyone's interest. This is not a political issue. Absolutely. It's an issue of community safety. Just like we're fighting the pandemic right now through public health measures, if we apply a public health lens to gun violence, we can make our community safer, and that's what my bill is all about. And you said public health. Why should gun violence be considered a public health issue you know because it, it affects the community broadly you yeah. know when when that gun violence happens it's not just the victim or the perpetrator it's everyone else involved yeah. and that trauma ripples through and has massive consequences you know I've talked to emergency room doctors who stitch up you know victims of, of, yeah. who are, are, are injured by gun violence and sends them back out into the community into the same environment in which that occurred so you know there's something that we have to do and the police has already said we can't arrest our way out of this problem I remember Chief Saunders said that the former chief of police for Toronto we need to do more yep. using a public health approach 
is comprehensive. Absolutely. It really looks at proactive solutions before violence occurs, maybe even root causes of poverty, marginalization. I've talked to young people in my community at the Boys and Girls Club and through organizations like YouthLink, and I've talked to young people. And they said to me, you know, Mitzi, is anyone really listening to us and to our generation? Because this is affecting us greatly. Absolutely. Even young people that you think know nothing about it because you think <clears throat> that they're too far removed. If you were to listen to them, they would be concerned. One of the things I'm concerned about is that we're normalizing gun violence. Yeah. We hear about these incidences week after week after week. You talk about a 33% increase in Scarborough. Yeah. You know, we're so new into the new year, and there has already been so many shooting incidences. Yeah. We know that firearms is a problem. Yeah. This is not one <clears throat> level of government. All levels of government have to work together to end gun violence and to make our community safer. And this is a, this is an investment that will benefit the whole community. Oh, absolutely. And you know, you talked about you know uh, the ripple effects. So, what is the cost that families typically have to deal with after losing a family member? Uh, to gun violence. One of the most heartbreaking things is to talk to a mother who has lost a child to gun violence. You know, or a father. You know, there's a father in Scarborough who's lost two sons wow. to gun violence, right? It's unimaginable. Yeah. The pain is unimaginable. Yeah. And what is hurtful really is when the supports run out yeah. and there's still that pain. And so we have to support our communities. You know, I talked to a woman who, there was an incident. Um, it was actually, I believe it was a 71st homicide that occurred in Toronto, wow. was in Scarborough. And I went to the community just to talk to people. Right. And there was a woman who came up to me and she says, you know, Mitzi, what do I do with my two kids when a bullet goes through our window? How do I protect them? Her okay. car was shot up. Wow. And she wasn't able to fix it, you know, because we have people who <clears throat> live in circumstances that are challenging. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Where does she turn to to get that help and support? She can't sleep at night. Her kids can't sleep at night. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah. type of trauma affects the whole community. There's yeah. a ripple effect. Yeah. What about the young people? I looked into their eyes, so 13 and 14 year olds, yeah. and they think about themselves, you know, if the guy I knew is shot in my community, what's going to happen to me? Yeah. We have to give them the confidence that, you know what, we got you. As a community, we have your back and we're going to support you. I'm calling on Doug Ford and his government to reinstate some of those supports that he cut very yeah. early on. You know, like the education other budget, $25 million was right. taken out of that budget, and which supported programs like Focus on Youth, which right. was aimed at giving young people who were at risk right. and a different choice. Yeah. The choice is perhaps employment and training. Right. And, and, and you know, Doug Ford would in return say, you know, we, we, have, we cut this so we can lower the budget deficit. But when we historically look at the budget deficit, it quadrupled yeah. this year. Yeah. And I'm asking you, Mitzi, you sitting in that parliament seat, don't you ever wonder, how do you quadruple the budget when you're making cuts? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you choose, a budget is all about your priorities, <laughs> right? And, and where, where are the priorities? Right. Right? Yeah. So right now, I'm concerned because, you know, we just heard that everyone's going to get a break on the license plate fee. You know, who doesn't want to save $120 a year? But that's going to take a billion dollars out of the provincial treasury. Yeah. You know, that billion dollars, it does pay for education. It pays for the nurses that are on yeah. that hospital room floor Absolutely. or those individuals in long-term care. At their, you know, they've served our community. Our seniors and our elders have served our community and have a need to have dignity Absolutely. in their in their later years. Yeah. So that billion dollars is going to come out of somewhere. Yes. So what are you going to cut, Mr. Ford, to save that buck? Yeah. Because something has to be cut away in yeah. order for people to, to get that break on their license plate. Right. So I'm really concerned about that. You know, Absolutely. are we going to increase the deficit even further? <laughs> Those and are is there a recovery that, plan there? You know, is there a plan? What is the plan? Yeah. <laughs> Affordable housing. Um, you know, there are people that uh, are sometimes on the street. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think affordable housing uh, in Scarborough, Scarborough Guildwood, but rather Ontario, is still an issue? It is an issue. It's actually the number one issue that I hear 
in my constituency office is about access to affordable housing, right. adequate housing, yeah. and um, you know, and that's for for people in all areas. So those who are renters, you know, are concerned that their rent is increasing, right. or they're concerned that they're not getting proper services from their landlords right. um, because you know they're not investing in the units right. to make them you know good quality places for people to live. Yeah. So there are many issues. The biggest issue, though, is is having more supply yeah. of, of affordable affordable housing and that's that's an area that we need to address we need to find ways of making housing more affordable you know we don't want to see people ending up on yeah. the streets yeah. um, during this pandemic I was very disappointed in the fact that we didn't provide relief to renters the way right. that BC did they provided a $500 um, uh, grant really to to renters so that they can pay their rent and stay housed in Ontario, there was no relief uh, And Mitzi, for $500 residential seems a, like a small amount, but for mm -hmm. someone who's going through a crisis, a vast majority of people yeah. that are going through a crisis, I think that just relieves them on certain angles. Yeah, it relieves yeah. them. It may allow them to buy food for that, for that month. Absolutely. But there's a lot of people who are choosing between keeping themselves housed and putting food on the table. Uh, and you know, one of the things that we have to realize that who really suffers are the children. Yeah. You know, the majority of food bank users in our community are children. Right. And you know, and the reliance on food bank is going up and up and up. And this all links back to the affordable housing issue. Yeah. And, and it's, a, it's an enormous issue in my community in Scarborough that we have to resolve. We have to make sure that people are able to stay housed in yeah. our community. Housing is a huge human right here in Canada Absolutely. and uh, and we have to give them more options. Absolutely. Ontario reopened schools effective January 17th, rather January 18th because we were hit by the storm. Uh, and so according to you, uh, has the education minister, Stephen Lecce, done a good job with the reopening of schools on Jan 17th? No, I, I, according to me, according to students and parents and <laughs> teachers and education workers, the whole system, you name it. <laughs> the whole system was thrown into chaos, yeah. largely because the government failed to plan and failed to communicate. Um, you know, the Omicron variant, yes, it was a, an enormous wave, yeah. but it was one in which the science table told the government that it was going to happen. So why did we not have some forward planning? Yeah. Why didn't we take steps to make our schools safer with ventilations with with HEPA filters with proper proper PPE right. inc including masks right. you know that uh, N95 grade mask to keep the virus at bay right. you know you know what one of the things with this government that they've done is that you know they they have not invested in our education right. system to make it safer for our students and for all education workers. They, yeah. they did not take steps to reduce set class sizes. They did not take proactive approaches on the ventilation front. Even yeah. when the federal government, who does not have responsibility for education at the provincial level, they stepped in, provided $769 million to Ontario for to wow. put right into the education system. Right. But some of, did some they of, did so they do anything with that budget? They delayed it. They delayed it. And so... And every day counts. Every day counts, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead, what the government, Ford government is doing is asking school boards to dip into their reserve funds to wow. respond to the pandemic and to COVID. Is that fair to our education system to take away funding from school-based priorities for learning and education for our st students and for our kids to fight the virus when the government is supposed to be providing those resources. Even right. right now, the TDSB, because the Ford government has failed to provide money for proper PPE, and even just giving them quality masks, they are doing it themselves. They're going into their reserve funds, buying N95 masks, and trying to get that out as quickly as possible. Right. So I would say that Stephen Lecce, as the Minister of Education, okay. failed on January 17th or 18th because of the snow day Absolutely. to have a, a, a proper reopening of schools. And we saw that because as quickly as we announced that schools were going to reopen, we announced that, no, nope, they're not going to reopen. Students are going to have to learn online. Enlighten me on something. Uh, about a year, year and a half ago, I interviewed Minister Lecce. Uh, on uh, education, and I, I asked him, uh, you know, this 
he said he stated that there's a 13 billion dollar but education budget that we're putting towards education in the next 10 years uh, which later I corrected it was 12.3 billion mm -hmm. uh, and I when I asked him that is this going into renovation of schools is this is going to building more schools is this going into hiring new teachers he said by no means are we trying to hire new teachers but three weeks ago I had MPP Rudy Cazetto uh, from Miss Saga Lakeshore on the show and he said that at this moment we have literally hired every single teacher there could possibly be in Ontario. We need more teachers. We don't have any more because everyone is employed. Is that true? No, not at all. Uh, in fact, Sammy, there are 80,000 uh, teachers who have gone through Teachers College, um, they have their teacher certifications, who have chosen to do other things with their life um, instead of teaching for a variety of reasons. We, we don't know why. So many of those teachers, if we have um, opportunities for them, for instance, making class sizes smaller yep. and creating, yep. you know, more spaces for those caring adults in our schools, uh, we will see that benefit for our children in our school system. So, you know, what this government refuses to do is to invest in public education. The right. FAO just released a report this week that looks at the, the provincial budget analysis. And if we look at it, there's a five $500 million cut to public education wow. in Ontario at a time when students have had two plus years of disruption. Absolutely. There are learning gaps that this government should be proactively planning for to support students, to support them so that they can move on to a life that is successful. You know, Absolutely. I started this by telling you about my journey here in Canada. And education was that key yeah. for my brothers and I. Absolutely. We, we really, you know, our, our entire lives opened up because of education. Absolutely. We need to ensure that we invest in public education in Ontario. It is the best thing we have in this province Absolutely. is our public education system and we need a government that wants to make that investment. I want to tell you about the Ontario Liberal Plan sure. because we put forward a plan in June of 2021 for investments. 16,000 new teachers and education workers would be hired. And when I say education workers, because we need social workers absolutely. in our school. We need school support ECE, workers, yeah, ECEs absolutely. in our schools, right? You know, language instructions. Yeah. We need people who are going to support students yeah. so that they can learn to the best of their potential. And that is an investment that we need to make in our province for the future of this province. Absolutely. Mitzi, very well said. Can we take a quick break with your permission? Absolutely. There you have it. There you have it. Mitzi Hunter, MPP of uh, Scarborough Guildwood. Keep watching House of Politics. We'll be back after this break. Thank you very much. राशन तू फिर पाकिस्तान आ गया क्या करूं भाईजान इधर के काम ही नहीं खत्म होते छोटा मुंह बड़ी बात करने लगा हूं खैर ये तो आप तकल्लुफ ही कर रहे हैं बड़ी अहम बात है गौर से सुन दुबई वापस जाते ही ऑनलाइन राशन डिजिटल अकाउंट खुलवाओ ये जो बैंक ऑफ पंजाब ने शुरू किया हुआ है हां स्टेट बैंक ऑफ पाकिस्तान की हिदायत पर ओवरसीज पाकिस्तानियों के लिए सहूलत है इधर देख प्रदेश से घर के बिल अदा करने हो पैसे भिजवाने हो नया पाकिस्तान सर्टिफिकेट या स्टॉक मार्केट में सरमायाकारी करनी हो गाड़ी निकलवानी हो अपने घर के लिए कर्ज चाहिए हो सब हो सकता है इसके अलावा 24 घंटे ऑनलाइन बैंकिंग की सहूलत भी बस 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 मेरे सारे मसले हल हो गए बस अब शादी रह गई तो आप अभी www.dop.com.pk विजिट करें और अपना रोशन डिजिटल अकाउंट बिल्कुल मुफ्त खुलवाएं बैंक ऑफ पंजाब रखे हर फर्द का ख्याल it is going to be held on Saturday, 26th of March, 2022. Come with families and enjoy the event. The event will be held at Capital Banquet Hall, Mississauga. See you there. Discover. 
the ultimate South Asian fashion at Dage. The most desirable wardrobe styling from famous Pakistani designers. One of the largest clothing stores in Toronto. Plan a visit today or shop online at dagefashions.com. Welcome back. My name is Sam Ajaz. You guys are watching House of Politics. Joining me today is MPP Mitzi uh, Hunter from Scarborough Guildwood. Mitzi, uh, Highway 413. Uh, it's an $8 billion project. What's your take on it? Should it be built or should it not be built? It should not be built. First of all, there's no need for building it because we want to focus on density. We want to focus on investing in transit and, and making sure we protect farmland, green space, you know, our green belt waterways, watersheds, yep. you know, that's what we have to, to think about here in Ontario. It's not just about what we want to do now, it's about our future, right? right? So, so for, for those reasons, it should not be built. But when you talk to the municipalities in which it's going to affect, you know, they don't want to have it either. And so what the Ontario Liberals have proposed is to cancel Fort Tur Highway 413 and to invest that $8 billion in our public education system. But I have a question, Mitzi. Can you take a transit budget and convert it into an education budget? Well, I mean, it's the, one it's one provincial budget, okay. so we have to determine where the priorities are okay. and what is most important. Okay. You know, I can tell you from my constituents, what's most important to them yeah. is good health care, yeah. education, yeah. and care for our elderly, as right. well as vulnerable people. Right. You know, when we look at those who are most vulnerable in our society, you know, they deserve a hand up and assistance as well. And so... Those are the priorities that we need to be focusing on in Ontario, right, right. not a highway yeah. that you know, no one has asked for it, uh, there isn't a need for it, yeah. and, uh, and we, instead we're damaging our watersheds, our green belt, our right. environment, our farmland, right. um, you know, for what reason? Right. When we could be using so, that So the PCs say that Highway 413 was initially mm -hmm. a Ontario Liberal initiative. Yeah. Is that true? Well, it was, and uh, the Ontario Liberals did a study that yeah. looked at the a, a needs assessment yep. and determined that it, wasn't, know, it needed. wasn't needed at this time. Um, okay. And so, you know, this is Premier Ford's, uh, you know, wrong priorities, really, yeah. um, because what we do need are some of those other critical areas, long-term care, yep. public education. Yep. Let's build schools. You know, and and hospitals. You know, that's an that's an area that I'm you know pushing for in my community yeah, 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 in Scarborough yeah, yeah, Guildwood yeah, yeah, because yeah. we need yeah. new and better hospitals yeah. there to serve the needs of our people yeah. today. The truckers' convoy. What's your stance on truckers' convoy against vaccine mandates that is rolling through Ontario? Last weekend they were in Toronto. What should Premier Ford do? What would the Liberals do if they are in power? Well, Premier Ford has been absent throughout this whole um, issue and, uh, you know, it's almost as if he wasn't the Premier of Ontario when the truckers rolled in into Ottawa. He was not present. Um, and then when they said they were coming to Toronto, he said, you know, God bless them, you know, they can come if they want. It's really irresponsible. He's abdicated his responsibilities. You know, yesterday, the leader of the Ontario Liberal Party, Stephen Del Duca, he visited Ottawa. He talked to small businesses that have been disrupted. You know, we talk about, you know, needing to support small businesses during lockdowns because of the difficulty during COVID. Well, these convoys that are have now encamped in Ottawa are, are dis and on the border as well are disrupting small businesses. They're disrupting the local economies. Yep. And that's wrong. And, and, and what I would do and what, you know, the Ontario Liberals have said is that, you know, we have to apply, um, you know, all of the, the tools that are available to us in terms of, you know, public nuisances, you know, not parking in areas you're not supposed to park yep. in. And we have to do that in an active and in a proactive way. I did full disclosure, Sammy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my dad was a trucker, yeah. right? He yeah, yeah. drove the big rigs. Yeah. And I remember wow. going with him in the cab of his car wow. across eastern Ontario and wow. in different ways, just seeing this beautiful province. 
sense. So I know yeah. that at the heart, truckers are good hard-working people yeah. they keep our province and our country running in terms of the supply chain supply chains and distribution right so they have to be heard we have to respect them right but also they have to respect the law right, right. and uh, and do things in a, in a way that does not violate right. the law so I'm a grassroots type of guy I'm a guy that uh, loves to be in front of people I'm a guy that loves to convince head-on not behind cameras not uh, by force could it be that Premier Ford or Stephen Del Duca or Andrew Horvath can actually come down onto the floor in front of these truckers and say, hey, I'm here to talk to you. Let's have a conversation. Hear their organization's leader, whoever is organizing this whole concept and say, hey, listen, do you guys know, I understand what you guys are saying. Well, I'm not denying, I'm not, I'm not, it's not that I'm not comprehending, but it's what you guys are doing right now is damaging so many different lives. Do you know what I mean? When a trucker hears that on camera, he feels or she feels that, you know what? They're just saying anything. But when you're on the floor, on the ground with them saying, hey, listen, I sympathize with you, but you gotta get off the street so we can open the city. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, like, first of all... Can that happen? Should that happen? <laughs> well, I, Stephen was there yesterday. So was he on the ground? No, he was talking to local businesses. He was. Was he talking to truckers? But he was, he was in the, he's in the precinct, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I haven't seen Andrea Horvath or, you Ford, know... Doug Ford. Doug Ford. I yeah. actually haven't seen Doug Ford at yeah. all, yeah. so <laughs> I don't know where, yeah, where he yeah, is. Yeah. Um, you know, so Stephen was there and available as as you know a leader of an opposition party right, right? so so I, I think we have to give him that credit okay um, you know and, and I would say that everyone needs to be heard it's yes. a function of our democracy yes. to, to listen to people to listen to their grievances and to work with them in within the rule of law within yes. within the respect for our Absolutely. our community and the laws of the land and, and of, yeah. of the municipality which in this case is ottawa the city yeah. of ottawa yeah. and and the, and the people in the city of ottawa deserve respect and and they deserve a peaceful night's sleep yeah. uh, not noise pollution and exhaust pollution diesel pollution and all of the things that they're going through right now yeah. that needs to stop Absolutely. you know while at the same time of course you can hear people out. You know, that's what democracy is about. You Absolutely. know, Sammy, we have to cherish this democracy Absolute, of ours, right? Absolutely. And we, we need to, to protect it. We need to make sure that, uh, that, you know, our young people can grow up and continue yeah. to evolve it yeah. and contribute to it. Absolutely. Uh, so if people have grievances and they don't feel that they're being heard, let's give them the chance. To, to be heard. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. We're going to finish off, we'll finish off with uh, what's happening in Alberta. Premier Jason Kenney in Alberta has lifted COVID-19 measures. Uh, Albertans will no longer need to show their QR code to dine in restaurants or sit uh, at entertainment venues. Do you predict Ontario will follow Alberta's footsteps? Rather, if you were to advise Premier Doug Ford, what would that advice be? Well, I follow the science, Premier Ford. You know, I remember when Premier Ford announced, oh, we're going to, you know, end vaccine <laughs> certificates in January of 2022. Yeah. And then Omicron came. Yeah. And what? Not only did we not, you know, yeah. um, get away, get, you do away with vaccine certificates, we ended up having a further lockdown Absolutely. and restriction, yeah. right? Because the, it, it is a, a virus. Yeah. We can't predict it, yeah. right? And yeah. so I would advise uh, Premier Ford to listen to, to, science. to, listen to the science yeah. and yeah. also to do more public education in a proactive way. Yeah. I would really also strongly advise him when he is rolling things out like free rapid tests yes. at grocery stores, yeah. <laughs> do the, the rollout properly. You know, grocery stores and Walmarts and those places are charging minimum amounts for people to go and get their free rapid test from the province, which is should be available to them, right? A senior in my community should not have to pay a minimum amount to pick up a free rapid test no. to keep them safe. Well, absolutely. Look, that's where the healthcare concept comes in. That's where uh, in the world we are the best. Yeah. But doesn't seem like it anymore. Yeah. Uh, Mitzi. But it will be again. Absolutely. Metsi, I want to thank you so much for your time you. uh, and being here, answering all these great questions and having such great answers. Thank you once again. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you for having me and for absolutely. what you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. There you have it. Metsi Hunter, MPP of Scarborough Guildwood, will bring on another elected official next week. If you have any questions, leave your comments in the box below or email us. Thank you very much.